Krishi Reds. Welcome back to Physics Channel with me, Pratama. And today, let us talk about modulation. Modulation is one of the most frequently used technical words in communication technology nowadays. One good example is that of your FM radio, where FM stands for Frequency Modulation. In this video, we are going to learn the basics of modulation techniques and see how they are applied in modern cellular, cellular and communication technology. Frequency and wavelength of a wave are inversely connected. Humans have the capability to hear sound frequency from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, or what we call as audio sound. But if a radio tower transmits electromagnetic wave of the same frequency, the size of the antennas required will be really high. In the antenna video, we have already seen that the size of the antenna is proportional to the wavelength. If we have transmitted the electromagnetic wave in the same frequency of sound, the antenna size required would have been in the range of kilometers. This is why we need modulations. Before the electromagnetic waves are transmitted, they should be modulated to a high frequency signal. We can understand the way we modulate the signals with a simple analogy. Try to throwing a piece of paper, it won't go far. Now, tie it to a stone and throw it again. The second method will be obviously more efficient than the first one, right? This is ex exactly how we do the modulations. In place of a stone modulation, uses uses a high frequency signal known as a carrier signal. As we know, any signal has three basic properties, amplitude, frequency, and phase. In the modulation process, one of the properties of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the message signal. For example, the frequency of the carrier signal is varied according to the amplitude of the message signal. This technique is known as frequency modulation. Please note that the frequency of a carrier signal is always high, which means the modulated signal is also of high frequency and energy. The value of the original signal can be easily retrieved from the frequency of the modulated signal. In the same way, we can also achieve amplitude modulation. Here, the amplitude of the carrier signal is varied based on the value of the message signal. The modulation techniques we have discussed so far have all been analog types. However, they are already obsolete. Analog modulation is susceptible to noise which degrades the quality of the signal. And moreover, in today's electronic instruments, all operations are carried out in digital form, where the digital signals are either a 1 or 0, or what we call as binary. So let's discuss the digital modulation techniques that are currently used. More specifically, let's see how the digital bit flow is converted to an electromagnetic wave. The first digital technique is amplitude shift key. Here, based on the digital pulse, the amplitude of the carrier signal is adjusted. High amplitude relates to 1 and low amplitude relates to 0. The next technique is called frequency shift key. Here, based on the value of the digital pulse, the frequency of the carrier signal is adjusted as well. In this case, high frequency relates to 1 and low frequency relates to 0. The third technique is phase shift keying. 
Here, the phase of the carrier signal is changed by 180 degrees when the, when the digital pulse moves from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. Telecommunication technology is all about increasing data transfer speed and also efficiency. But if you use any of the digital modulation techniques explained previously, you wouldn't get a high data transfer speed. However, there is a technique in physics which if we use it, means you can practically send up to 6 bit of information as a single electromagnetic wave. This technique is known as quadrature amplitude modulation. To understand QAM in an easy way, let's take two analog signals. The beauty of QAM is that you can modulate these two different signals as a single signal and then transmit it. Then, at the receiver end, you will be able to separate out the original signals, thereby it will saving the bandwidth. Let's see how this modulation is done. In QAM, the first signal is amplitude modulated using a carrier wave as shown. The second signal is also amplitude modulated with a carrier wave of the same frequency and amplitude but after giving the carrier signal a 90 degree phase shift. Now, these two modulated signals are mixed together and form a single signal. We call it a multiplex signal. This interesting thing is that on the receiver side, we can easily separate out the original signals from the multiplex signal. In the case of digital QAM, a similar approach is used. Here, instead of analog signals, different combinations of bits are added together to produce a multiplex signal. Let's see how 16 QAM works. If you are familiar with digital technology, you know that any form of data is just a collection of 1 and zeros. In 16 QAM, we can pack 4 bits together and set it as a single electromagnetic wave. Based on the values of the 4 bits, this output will have different phase angle and also amplitude. This means the phase angle and amplitude of the multiplex signal can completely represent 4 bits of data. In 16 QAM, such 16 bit values can be represented by adjusting the phase and also the amplitude of the multiplex signal. And this single multiplex signal is then used for the transmission. You can see how the different amplitude and phase electromagnetic signal represents various 4 bits of data. Using a similar technique to that use an analog modulation, here the amplitude modulated signal are also mixed together. And finally, a single output is produced. As we have seen in this modulation, two carrier signals that are out of phase by 90 degrees are used. Hence, the word quadrature is used to refer to this technique. If instead of QAM, we had used a normal modulation technique to send bits of data we would have used for electromagnetic signals. Thus, 16 QAM increases the data transfer speed by four times. Scientists have even achieved 64 QAM, which is used in 4G communication. 64 QAM uses 6 bits of data at a time, thus making the data transfer speed 6 times faster compared to a normal modulation technique. These modulation techniques are not restricted to only cellular communication and FM radio, but also have applications in television broadcasting, Wi-Fi technology, and also optical fibers. Okay guys, that is my explanations about modulations. I do hope you understand about the things that I've explained just now. 
And to discuss more about this, we will meet in Zoom sessions and also in our WhatsApp group. Thank you for your attention. See you again and bye-bye.